This is chapter number seven, print culture and the modern world. So we were discussing about the printing and how it changed the scenario of different groups, different countries. Started with China, and then what happened? It came to Europe. So when it came, there was a sudden change in the mood of the public that is the print revolution wherever something changes very drastically means it's a 90 degree turn then we say it is a revolution so print revolution means the development of different technologies as far as printing is concerned and then production of books and this changed the lives of people that is they were getting information knowledge this influenced or affected the perceptions or thinking of the common people that is now they have an idea or they have a way to look to certain things in a different way so a new reading public means when the printing press it emerged or you can say it developed a new reading public emerged the cost because the printing was so high and the cost became very low. So even the labor means the people who can't afford the previously, they were able to get it. Books, books were flooded with the market. And because of this, the common people who were previously the oral people, that means they were only listening. That is, they were just listening. Ballads were recited to them. Folk tales were narrated to them. Means they were only hearing. But because of the advent of this printing technology and coming of the books, now we have a reading public. Means hearing public was there. The public or the people who were hearing the things. But now the public who is reading also, this came into being. And this transition, it was though it was not so simple, because only the read book by this book can only be read by the literates. What about the people who are not so literate? So what these publishers and printers did, they added pictures, they printed pub, or they started publishing popular ballads, ballad means a historical account of folk tale in words usually sung or recited and also folk tales this is how they presented lot of pictures in the book right and there is a word going to come taverns so tavern means places who pe where people gather to drink alcohol they take drinks and to be served food and they meet and exchange ideas so these were you know, sung and recited in these places, taverns. So what we can say here is that now we have a transformation from hearing public to reading public. Then came, because the book came, everyone has their idea. So those who wanted to show that they have an idea different from the belief of the others, or specially related to religious aspects, then things changed. The new printed li literature was criticized because the literature was too much. Printing was done too much. So the new printed literature was criticized because people fear, means those who criticize, they fear that if there was no control over this printing and reading, the people might get rebellious or you can say they will get some irreligious thought. This may spread. So what they did, those who disagreed with the established authorities which was already there, they could now print and circulate ideas. Everyone can print and circulate their ideas. 1517, this is a very, very important date. Very, very important date because it pertains to Christianity. Previously, Catholics and orthodox this was the we can say graph of 
Christianity. Now here comes Martin Luther. He was Martin Martin Luther was a religious reformer. He was related to Christianity. So he wrote 95 theses. And in this 95 theses, he did what? He criticized the practices and rituals, those things were going on of the Roman Catholic Church. So they he he criticized this Catholic ritual, some of the Catholic uh, rituals and practices. So Luther writings, because people were of that idea, they were people, but they were not getting anything. So when the publishing and book came, his book was actually spread like fire. So everyone was reading it. And now there was a division in church. There was a different branch of Christianity which was Protestant Reformation. This is very important. You need to understand this. Martin Luther was responsible for the Protestant Reformation. Now we have Catholics and Protestant in Christianity. Orthodox also. So how these different uh, scholars also, because every everyone knows one has different uh, field. So Martin Luther was a reformer, religious reformer. But there were people who were scientists also. They have scientific ideas. So they started printing it. They, they started publishing it. So in 1558, the Roman church, because things were going on and these Roman church, they were not happy with what is going on. So what they did, they put control over these publishers and the booksellers. And also they had a proper index, means all the list of the books which are prohibited. So they were maintaining a proper index of the prohibited books. That is the books they have prohibited or they have restricted. So let us go into the detail and see what other things we can find out here. So now because the printing was going on, so there was a debate. Means people were talking now. There were good ideas also. There were different ideas also. So there was a possibility of people discussing. But not everyone welcomed this printed book. Why? Because people were somewhere in apprehensive that whatever is coming, whatever is coming uh, in the books, it may change people's mind. So we have to have some restriction on this printing because it will make people rebellious. Because at that time, religion, religious thoughts were very high. So people may become irreligious. So even, you know, if you have some very, some minute valuability uh, of literature, but other literature is simply, simply waste. Sim they, they think that it is not good. And the criticism actually for different things were also not, not accepted. So I'll go to the, that uh, Martin Luther thing again. In 1517, this you have to learn again and again, because this is a very important thing. Martin Luther, 1517. 95 theses he made. So what was this thesis? About the Catholic rituals and customs which he doesn't, he, he didn't agree. And Roman Catholic Church, he doesn't, he didn't agree. So what he did in Wittenberg, he went and posted this on every church door. So they, there started a debate because people were reading it. And people was reading it so much that it just spread like anything. Luther trans this this led to the Protestant Reformation. So this is how Protestant and Catholics we know. Catholics we know, but how this Protestant become because this is because of books only. He sold that is the New Testament because Luther translation was New Testament, and New Testament sold five thousand copies within a few weeks, and he has to again reprint in three months. So this by this. Uh, Luther just said that, okay, this printing is a very ultimate gift of God so that I can just spread the ideas. And there are other scholars, scholars also, they were doing this because the atmosphere, which have, people have some intellectual at atmosphere and this helped to uh, give new uh, fire to this reformation idea. So again, let me come to this Protestant reformation because this is being asked number of times. A 16th century movement to reform the Catholic Church because at that time, the Catholics were dominating or only Catholics were there. It was dominated by Rome. But Martin, Martin Luther, he was the Protestant Reformation. Protest means protesting against or you have, uh, you can say you are against what is going on. So you are protesting. 
and several traditions of anti catholic christianity developed out of this movement and that is how this is called as protestant movement so print and dissent when printing was going on it is a new voice for the dissent it was new voice for the dissent so there was a person called menaccio as we just said that because of printing and uh, you know various books coming up there were people who were actually taking the interpretation by themselves that is if i i say something to you you may take in different way your friend can take it in a different way so in 16th century menaccio he was a, just a miller in italy italy he started reading these books especially the religious book and he interpreted or you can say he reinterpreted the bible and he said or he had some different idea that is he formulated a view of god and creation that enraged means whatever he has thought or he has interpreted roman catholic church was not agreeing to that so then roman church did what it was inquisition inquisition means if anyone is uh, saying against the religion then he or she can be taken up in the custody or he can be you know debarred or you know certain actions actions can be taken so menaccio what would happen to him he was hauled up twice he was taken up twice and ultimately he was killed he was executed so this things were going on and they were roman church were they after this menaccio incident they were taking care of what is going on what books are coming what is good what is bad they were they were having eye upon they were having surveillance or control on publishers and booksellers and then they maintained a proper index of the prohibited book as i just suggested from 1558 so this is how you know these uh, picture as are been dramatized that these are the skeletal figures and this skeletal figures control the printer and his workers so those who have different ideas that is everyone is dancing on somebody's tune so this is how people reacted then the reading mania mania means everyone was reading everyone was reading reading mania so by the end of 18th century literacy rates in europe was as high as 60 to 80% can you and can you just believe it in 10 or you can say in 10 uh, around 8 people 8 6 to 8 people were literate at that time 18th century and churches of different denominations in different different uh, belief they set up proper colleges schools in villages and this is how the peasants and artisans they got literate and new forms of literature appeared that targeted new audiences and these were almanacs and ritual calendars and this also have ballads and folk tales folk tales on it ballads and ballads and folk tales are just the uh, you know stories presented in form of picture in england there was a penny chap book what is a penny penny is a very you can say uh, like our uh, paisa it's a very small amount in the in the currency so penny chap book chap books are those books which are very small so they they come in penny that is why it is called as penny chap book and these were carried out by various various uh, peddlers and these were known as chapmen at that time and they used to sell it because it was it was just on on uh, you can get it on in a just penny that is why it was available to poor also then the previous prior ancient medieval scientific text scientific texts means all those who have scientific ideas this text also were compiled and published at that time and the maps and scientific diagrams were also printed and of course we know the name of isaac newton his discovery and writings of thomas paine voltaire and jean jacques rousseau were also widely printed and read and people believe that books could change the world liberate society and they can just dispo, they, they can just uh, a form of disposition they can do and tyranny and herald a time when reason 
and intellect would rule. That means all those people who are ruling, they can be disposed of. They can be just taken out because now books are there and people are getting intellect. People are getting intelligent. They are reading. So let us go to this reading money and see what we have uh, different things. So as I said that people were getting literate, 60 to 80 percent were literate and church of different different uh, thoughts or we, we know that Catholic Orthodox and then we have this uh, Protestant after that also various forms of the Methodist and Baptist they came. So they opened schools in villages that is how the literacy came to different different you can say the artisans also and other, pe other people also they started they, they started getting literate and now they were stead they were reading and then as I said there was a new popular literature and targeting a very new new audiences and peddlers were there they were just selling these uh, penny chap books and this penny chap books is in England so there were alumnex and ritual calendars which contains ballads and folk, folk tales and in England, chap books were there. Chapman, the person who sell, sells this chap book, and this was just coming in a penny, very small amount. Then in France, there was Bibliothèque Bleu, Bibliothèque Bleu, and this was also a very small priced book and not a very good quality paper. And this was bound with very cheap blue blue covers. And there were also some romances, very small, four or five pages of romances and history books also. And this was just going on and people were getting interest and that is how it, these, there are different types of books which were coming. And then after that, as I just said, that the scientists and philosophers, those people who were in scientific uh, bend of mind, they also started publishing. As I just mentioned, scientist, the greatest scientist of all times, Isaac Newton, he published his discoveries. Only after that, people came to know that what Isaac Newton has done. And then after that, there were great thinkers. There were great thinkers like Thomas Paine, Voltaire, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. They also printed and all people, they read what they have done. So you can say the science, reason, rationality all came as popular literature. There is a world called denomination. You can say just a subgroup with a religion. And alumnic, there is, this is a word, very important word. Alumnak. This is the, this is called in Hindi Panchang. Means an annual publication giving the astronomical data. That is what is going to go happen in one year. Sun, moon, timing of full tides, eclipses and every other thing is shown in this Panchang or Alumnak. Then we have chap book. We just saw these are the pocket books. People can keep it in their pocket and those who sell were called as Chapman. Tremble, therefore tyrants of the world and then we will talk about print culture and French revolution, revolution. So let us see this print culture then I will go here. So print culture and the French revolution, print culture created the conditions. So there has to be something you know, there has to be some, uh, some kind of uh, background so that something can happen. So here the French revolution, the background was the print culture. So print popularized the ideas of the enlightened thinkers. So whatever thinkers were thinking, they were just printing it. And they attacked the sacred authority of the church at that time. And also the power of the state, despotic powers of the state, that is the rulers. That is how eroding the legitimacy of social order based on tradition. And this Voltaire and Rousseau, as I just said, they were just read immensely. All values, norms and institutions were re-evaluated. Re -evaluated. And now people were quite critical. They were asking questions. And new ideas of social revolution came into being. By the 1780s, this literature mocked the royalty now. Those people who were at, on the top. And there were a sentiment of hostility against those who are ruling, that is the monarchy. So there is a word which is uh, coming. Let us see that word first. Then I'll go to the detail here. This is depo, despotism. What is this despotism? 
See, a system of governance in which absolute power is exercised by only uh, individual. Nirankushwad, that is a person is the whole soul and he has all the authority. Nobody can question him. There is no legal binding. There is no constitutional check. Nirankushwad. So tremble, therefore, tyrants of the world. As I just said, that now people have this idea that these books, these thoughts, or this printing, it is the now the time that this printing is so big at that time, or it is so powerful that they will just force this nirankush, or uh, you can say the despotism or despotism, they can take them away or they can just throw them away. This is what people thought because of the books going at that time. People were started debating, they were talking about and they were this Louis Sebastian Mercier also, he declared that now the printing press has that power, it can just dispose anyone. So print culture and French Revolution, as I said, that this French Revolution, what is the background? How did this French Revolution occur? There are so many things which, which actually instigated this French Revolution. But one of the things is print culture. So let us see how it happened. There are three types of argument. First of all, print popularized the ideas of the enlightened thinkers. Those thinkers which were giving the idea, they were critical to the, the tradition, the superstition and de despotism. So they were just giving these ideas and these ideas like for the church, for the rulers, it was flowing because of the printing, because the print was there. And the writings of Voltaire and Rousseau, they were being read by everyone widely. So now people have a new eye, they have a new thought because they can see that what other people think and mainly the big thinkers think. So they were quite critical now and they were understanding the logic, the rationality of what things are going on. Then second was print created a new culture of dialogue and debate. That is, as I just said, print the books and the different uh, literature, it, it gave the power to reason. Now everyone can question the ideas and belief which were going on. So this is a kind of, uh, you know, they have the idea that social revolution is necessary. And third thing is, by the 1780s, there was an outpouring of literature. There were so many literature coming, which were mocking or which were actually showing that this royalty or these big people or this monarch, they are not good. I'll just show you. So this is the picture. It was showing that, that this nobility and the big people, the church people, everyone was having fun. How about the common people? These peasants, artisans and workers, how about these? They are oppressed. They are enjoying their life, but they are oppressed. So these are the uh, cartoons being spread and this is how people came. And this actually impacted the thinking of people. See, this, is, this actually impacted the uh, thinking of people, be people before the revolution. So this is the third thing. Cartoons and caricatures, they showed because they were made on the uh, monarchy. and this showed and this affected the people. They understood that what is going on here? They are having fun. So they have they got hostile or they had the hostile sentiments towards this monarchy. So these were the argument at that time. And as I said, there were people also uh, which were which were uh, giving good ideas like Voltaire and Rousseau. They were exposing what is going on in monarchy. They were exposing what is the propaganda being spread by the church. So people started thinking it and they, they analyzed and interpreted all this. So people now have a thinking which is quite different from what is being fed previously to them by different uh, religious leaders, you can say, or different powerful uh, monarchs. The 19th century. So we'll talk about this uh, 19th century in the next discussion. Till then, thank you so much. Take care of yourself.